Hi everyone, my name is Ivan and with my colleague Ivka, we are from Slovak University of Technology and we would like to introduce you our research in cooperation with uh, Institute for Clinical and Experimental Medicine in Prague with the topic uh, weekly supervised semantic cell segmentation uh, using knowledge distillation. Uh, the motivation for our research is primarily that up to 18 million people die each year on cardiovascular diseases, and which includes heart or blood vessel diseases, and a cardiac biopsy is an effective way to uh, identify possible issues with the health uh, patient health status. After tissue collection and digitalization, the samples must be viewed by the doctor and evaluated manually which can be challenging and time-consuming tasks. Digital pathology offers uh, the support and provides additional information which can help to detect uh, some small deviation or problematic areas earlier. And our personal motivation is based on the results of cell semantic segmentation is to continue in the research to identify higher morphological structures such as blood vessels and inflammations and this could help to pathologists to diagnose her transplant, uh, her transplant rejection faster. In our work, we are focused to create a general approach uh, for cell segmentation and uh, classification based on weekly annotated data and inaccurate annotations. And our next objective is to reduce the demands and requirements on uh, domain experts, which are in our case doctors and pathologists, where we are trying to use as few uh, annotations as possible to train the model for nuclei classification. And finally, we, we would like to help pathologists to improve and accelerate the resulting analysis of images after heart <coughs> biopsy. So the articles we read about how to work with inaccurate annotations could be primarily di divided into two groups, and which includes human in the loop and knowledge distillation. The first group of articles is related to human in the loop, where the domain experts interact with the method of artificial intelligence to obtain more accurate information. And most of these approaches consist of three main steps or phases, where the first one is training the model on inac inaccurate annotations, the second step is predicting using this model the unseen data, so we can get some kind of annotations. <coughs> and in the third step, the created annotations are adjusted or corrected by domain experts. And phases two and three, they can be repeated or done in a loop until there are no more incorrect annotations or until some other conditions are met. Adjusting annotations, it can be done in two ways. It's either manual correction of annotations or just marking the annotation as correct or incorrect. As a result, the model is fine-tuned on annotations corrected by the domain experts. Uh, the second approach for dealing with uh, weekly annotated data is knowledge distillation, uh, uh, which means the transferring knowledge between two or more, mo more models to obtain more generalized solution. And knowledge distillation is also no, known as uh, teacher-student architecture, where teacher is trained on small amount of data or uh, inaccurate annotations. And the next step is to train the student using knowledge from the teacher, which means the, we are using annotations created by the teacher to train the student. There are several methods for, uh, based on teacher-student architecture, including uh, teacher-student training, where the student becomes the next becomes the new teacher for the next student. And the second approach is uh, uh, substituting teacher and student in the training process, whereby they exchange knowledge be between each other. And the teacher may have a greater capacity or similar learning capacity as the student. Currently, pathologists in uh, ICAM are using uh, QPA tool to primarily to identify nuclei in and higher morphological structures. And QPA can segment uh, cells using uh, parametric methods like color thresholding in using uh, based on uh, hematoxylin and eosine staining for segmentation and methods like k nearest neighbor or random forest for cell classification. And the main disadvantage of this uh, tool is the excessive dependence of the result uh, on the initial setting by the doctor. 
So in this picture, you can see our overall approach with all the inputs, outputs, and connections between the models or steps. And our study aims to create a comprehensive approach for analyzing nuclei in histological images from segmentation to classification, and this should be applicable to various tissue and organ types. We work mostly with the data which were provided by ICAM, where we got some synthetic annotations which were automatically created by QPAD, and we also got some annotations which were manually created by the domain experts or pathologists. Based on the related work, we decided that the teacher-student approach is the most appropriate for our problem with weekly annotated data. We can see the main step, teacher model, student model, and the transferring knowledge between them are highlighted in the picture. And we also simulate active learning with involvement of, of human in the training loop to improve the results, but not, to have, but not having additional requirements on doctors. Our proposed method is divided into four main phases, and we'll go through them. In the, in, uh, in the initial phase of our approach, we aim to segment nuclei in histological images. For this purpose, we are using the uh, data set provided by the ICAM. And besides this, we, we are using two more uh, through public available data sets called Lizard and Manusek. We also, uh, in this phase, we also work with multiple scales for the, for, for the data set by the ICAM with the goal to create a, a general proposed model. Custom segmentation is necessary because the QPAD uh, tool uses only thresholding methods to determine segmentation, and these thresholds are mostly sample specific. And in this phase, we experimented with two models, and there were UNET and UNET++, where UNET model come as the best one, which we use in the next steps of our approach. The second phase consists of training a neural network called as teacher, and the input to this uh, step is the segmentation masks obtained by our segmentation model and classifications provided by, by uh, QPAD tool. And, uh, the, there are three classes, immune cells, muscle cells, and other cells. We work with the original magnification after experiments with multiple resolution. Based on evaluation of several mod models, we choose the best one, which was ResNet 18, uh, which we use in the further steps. Uh, in the phase three, we trained a neural network called student, and we also involved the teacher in the training. As a student, we chose the RCCNet model to obtain a relatively small classification network. So the goal is to classify nuclei using knowledge distillation. The student is trained on patches of images, where during training, the actual class is determined by teacher, and during validation and testing, the class is determined by the synthetic annotations we got. In the last phase, we fine-tune the RCCNet student model on expert annotations with the aim of precise specification for the given task. So the goal of this phase is like to uh, refine current predictions by applying the human in the loop approach. So we simulated this by gradual using of classification, which were manually created by the pathologist. We see the benefit in this step also in this that the doctor doesn't have to mark every cell independently, like in the picture on the left but he can just mark a few regions to indicate the class of each cells in the cluster, and our method can process both type of annotations. When training, instead of using all of the data, we look for a suitable lower limit of the cells, which would improve the results, and we use the same count of cells for each class. So we expect that the student obtains more reliable information from accurate annotations and that this could be reflected in a better semantic segmentation and reducing or eliminating the initial error from the weekly annotated data. So the result is a relatively small classification network that is well adapted to uh, the specified task, and at the same time, this network can be efficiently and quickly modified by the next round of fine tuning. So we here, uh, we again see our overall view on proposed methods uh, with um, the uh, divided into mentioned phases. Uh, we have implemented the different parts in multiple iterations with the different parameters, such as patch size, training cycle constants, or different architectures. In our research, we aim to combine the proven methods, such as a unit for segmentation with new approaches uh, for exploiting weekly annotated uh, data in the field of neural networks, such as human in the loop and knowledge distillation. 
the, auto, uh, the output of the proposed approach is model for nuclear segmentation, uh, student, where was uh, teacher model uh, for uh, cell classification and specifically trained student for nuclear classification uh, using the ACM data set. In the training process, the demands on doctors are significantly reduced uh, by using a weekly annotated data from the QPAT, but, by, uh, but also by the fact that uh, we doesn't need uh, settings parameters such as QPAT does. And uh, here are our results. So we created a general model for nuclease segmentation, and in this picture we can see the comparison of the results we got by our segmentation model with the synthetic annotation we got from ICAM. And for example, in the top center we can see that our model performs better on like small nuclease. We trained the teacher model on data with and without applying Matsenko normalization, and we also experimented with the weak and strong synthetic annotations. And when comparing the result, we can say that the teacher model ResNet 18 performs better on data without applying normalization, and it's also on the test and doctor annotations. This table uh, in this table, we see the student evaluation after teacher training and also after uh, fine tuning. Where we, where we can see also how many cells were used in the fine tuning. So as presented in the table, the results indicate that the fine tuning, the preliminary pre-trained RCCNet model can lead to improvement. Specifically, you can see that using 1,500 cells led to improvement in a higher F1 score and also accuracy. On this slide, we can see the overall comparison of all an annotations either we got or we created. So we see the strong synthetic annotations created by QPAT, annotations created by teacher, and the annotations created by our fine-tuned students, and we can see that the students perform, performs, uh, that the students get the highest metrics. And in conclusion, uh, this study pre presents a novel robust uh, approach for cell segmentation and classification which was evaluated on wall slide images uh, from heart biopsy. This approach can be generally be applied to any histological images with, uh, from different organs and with uh, different type of types of cells. And we can deal with weak weekly annotations uh, by eliminating error in teacher-student training, and we do not need a large amount of data because with active learning, the model is fine-tuned iteratively. To summarize, our main contributions are aerobos, a uh, model for nuclear segmentation in different organs and resolutions, a teacher model usable for training other students, and a relatively small network that is well adapted to a specific task, which is cell classification in age and knee images. A combination of machine learning and digital pathology can automate image analysis, and hence the, has the potential, potential to revolutionize the field of pathology by improving diagnostic accuracy, increasing efficiency and reducing costs. And thank you for your attention and feel free to ask to any questions. I think we could find to the teacher, but we decided to find to the student because it's a smaller network, and we wanted to lower the comp the requirements also on computers, and so that that's why we decided to find to the student. So Yeah, okay, so we c uh, also we could compare it. That's a fair point, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
-hmm. You can continue. <laughs> Uh, yes, from uh, the data set provided by uh, ICAM, and it, uh, this segmentation was based on a thresholding, on like color thresholding based on hematoxylin and eosin staining, but uh, other data sets there were uh, strong annotations of. Uh, Uh, but these thresholds are uh, sample specific, so it it's could be hard to. Mm. So it would be hard to generalize and use it for other other samples of images, because it was always the sample specific only for the one image or for the one tissue they wanted to analyze. Well, So they were like, I think, 20 images, oh, and nice. not a lot, but the images were quite large, but I think it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we have to use the knowledge distillation and human in the loop approach, because there wasn't enough data. Okay. Yeah, we have more time for questions, feel free. Yes. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so if my understanding is right, what the feature model output is just like more annotation on the same image, right? Mm -hmm. so, so are you like saying the number of images that you have more annotation on those images for this new model? So like here I see feature annotation, so I guess that means like you have to annotate yes. the Yes, I think you are right, yes. Right. Do you understand the question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So our main goal bo was to uh, reduce our uh, also computer resources which we can use because uh, we would like to run this model uh, also on computers, uh, on, uh, on doctor's computers. So. So we wanted to allow the doctors to run the fine tuning, so that's why the second network which they were using should be smaller and should be as small as possible. So that's why we decided to make the teacher network a bit bigger so you can learn all the important informations and then pass the knowledge to smaller network students which can, use, which can be used also on doctor's computer or so on. Yes, because it's functioned on the expert annotations.
think I get it. You don't want to retrain the teacher no. model many no. times. They want to uh, like train the teacher model once and maybe then play with, uh, with the student model. But maybe you can talk about it uh, later more. So, are there any other questions? Okay. Uh, we are using pages 16 of the time 16, uh, which was provided by the, our segmentation model, and we are classifying all, all, only these pages small where there is only one ma maximum to nuclei. And the segmentation model already does the same process? The segmentation model, does, 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 does it like that or is it like it or? Uh, no, it's binary segmentation. Okay, so maybe are there any other questions? Okay, so then we'll thank speakers again. Thank you. Thank you.